Hi, and welcome to today's podcast episode. Thank you for being here. I am really looking forward to sharing with you in this episode steps that I took to get fit and healthy, how I dropped 42 pounds um, without focusing on weight loss by doing less, not more. I'm really excited to share this with you today. And I hope you're keeping well wherever you are and you're taking good care of yourself. So let's dive straight in. So for me to share with you what eventually worked, I want to give you a little bit of a backstory. I was always healthy and fit growing up. I loved sports, I had great friends, and I really enjoyed the feeling that fitness and health gave me. I loved it, I felt terrific, I felt great in my body. Fast forward many years later and kids and, and work took over and I started to gain weight. I started to have really unhealthy habits. I started to turn to um, external forces to unwind, like comfort eating, eating on the couch late at night, big portions, uh, drinking at the weekends on Fridays and Saturday nights. And I started to, over time, slowly lose my identity. I felt very bad in myself, not just physically. My clothes were really tight. I felt really uncomfortable in my clothes. Um, I didn't like how I looked at all. And that had a massive knock-on effect on my confidence and on my self-esteem. But worse than that, I felt really bad in myself. Um, I isolated myself. I felt very lonely. I felt that all there was to me in that phase of my life was work and kids, work and kids. I had no hobbies. I didn't really want to go out and meet people. I felt really, really busy and rushed. You know, that busy and rushed where you just feel like you have absolutely no time for yourself and you, you, you're just, you're just every bit of the, the day is so busy. Um, and I have, I had absolutely no time for myself. I didn't prioritize myself. Um, and I was a total people pleaser, which which has has a real damaging effect on your self esteem. If you're listening in and and, you, and you're a people pleaser, you know what I mean. That it's it people pleasing sounds um, not as bad as it actually is. But if you're an actual people pleaser, um, it it really erodes your confidence and it makes you feel very inauthentic which just has a real knock-on effect on your on your self-esteem um, so for me my inner critic got louder um, I was a huge comfort eater I became three stone overweight and I just felt very very trapped in my unhealthy habits trapped I felt like I didn't want to be eating so much food but I didn't I, I just couldn't seem to stop I didn't mean to be drinking so much wine but I just couldn't seem to stop um, I felt very stressed out and very anxious at this time and I I longed to be fit and healthy it's all I wanted to be I wanted to feel good in my clothes to feel happy in my appearance I wanted to feel strong and have energy and feel confident and to feel calm and relaxed and to recognize myself in the mirror and see that person in the mirror and, and love that person and go wow I love you so much and most importantly I wanted to be full of energy and interested in life again I, I, I lost a lot of my motivation and enthusiasm that I had for life. I missed friendships, I missed connections, I longed to have hobbies and, and feel confident in my own skin. And One day I just had enough. I decided that's it, I didn't want to feel bad anymore and I was going to do whatever it took to become fit and healthy. And I went on this journey of trying to get fit and healthy. Um, and what I tried was, was, was everything really. Um, Dieting, calorie counting, weighing myself. I tried Slimming World, Weight Watchers, Uni Slim. I went through a phase where I went, where I counted my steps religiously every day. I tracked my food on different apps. I had a personal trainer for a while. I joined a gym, a few gyms. Um, I tried diet plans. I did couch to 5K. I dieted, I calorie counted. And with, with all of those things, let's just label them weight loss industry stuff. I always felt like I was taking one step forward and two steps back. And what I mean by that was that I failed on every single one. And the failure, the feeling of failure on all of those things made me feel even worse in myself. So each time I tried something, each time I tried to lose weight, each time I tried to get fit and healthy, a part of my confidence eroded even more to the point where I was really wondering, was I ever actually going to be able to get fit and healthy? 
And if you're listening in now and you know what I mean, you never really look to to blame the thing you're doing. You always put the blame on yourself. I wasn't motivated enough. I like food too much. I have a sweet tooth. And it's always you and, and the reasons why you couldn't seem to stick to the plan. So I, I was really going around in circles for a long time and I became more obsessed with food and more obsessed with exercise or thinking about exercise than I had ever, ever been. Mondays were an absolute torture. I was going around and around in circles, feeling not too bad on a Thursday, only to feel absolutely brutal again on a Monday. And one day I saw an ad for a fitness and nutrition coach to to train to be a fitness and nutrition coach. And I remember thinking it was in the Galway advertiser and I was like, this is deadly. This is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to learn how to exercise and I'm going to learn what to eat. And that's it. It's going to be terrific. All my problems are going to be solved. And I qualified. I went on to become a fitness and nutrition coach. Um, But it was it was great. Like that period that I did the course was really, really good. I felt the old me coming back again. I felt that I was losing weight, getting fit, beginning to feel good in my clothes. My confidence was increasing. um, And I just began to think, I think this is working. However, I think the course must have been over about three to four weeks when I noticed that all my motivation was going. And do you know what I mean when I say that You've, you, you don't know why and you can't really pinpoint the time, but you, just your old habits started creeping back. I could hear myself saying, oh, I can't make that work out. I have to do this. And just the old me was creeping back. My healthy habits were beginning to slowly take a back seat and my unhealthy habits were coming to the forefront again. I was staying up too late. I was comfort eating on the couch. I was drinking too much wine. I was taking the time left at the end of the day instead of making time for myself. I was missing workouts and I felt, oh no, this hasn't been a lifestyle change at all. This was only temporary. And I, I hit rock bottom. I I went right back to square one and I just felt so bad. I just had this bad feeling in the bottom of my stomach. This, you are a failure, Jessica what are you doing with your life? And I just started to question everything and question my capabilities, my intelligence, everything. I I really hit an all-time low. And one day I bumped into one of my old coaches on the course and I must have looked a bit upset, but we went for coffee and I told him everything that I just felt so bad. I was back to square one. All I wanted to do was be fit and healthy and to enjoy being fit and healthy and for it to be a lifestyle, not a struggle. And he said something to me that will stick with me for the rest of my life. He told me that all those unhealthy habits that I was describing to him were just symptoms of the real problem. And I remember sitting there with my coffee going, oh my God, symptoms of the real problem. This is so exciting. Tell me more. And he went on to tell me that he'd never seen or been with somebody um, so tough on themselves like I was, that it was hard, that it's hard to fix your habits if you always see yourself the same way, that how can you expect to make changes if you don't change the way you think about yourself? I'm just going to say that again. I've written it down. He said, I've never seen someone so tough on themselves as you are. It's hard to fix your habits if you always see yourself the same way. How can you make changes if you don't fix yourself? And he went on to telling me that getting fit and healthy is like building a house. And that I'd learned everything to build a house. I had learned everything. I knew how to build a house. I knew how to get fit and healthy. Um, I knew exactly what I had to do to work out. And I knew exactly what I had to eat. But the mistake I was making was that I was building my health and fitness on shaky foundations. And the foundations I had couldn't support my new lifestyle. So I was trying to build this house on really shaky foundations. And those foundations were low self-esteem, no self-love, no boundaries, a loud negative inner critic, negative self-talk, little understanding of my relationship with myself, and a huge lack of confidence. And I was taken aback because the analogy of the house made it so simple for me to understand. I'm trying to build a house. 
I know what to eat. I know how to exercise. And I'm trying to build this house and the house keeps getting knocked down. Why is the house getting knocked down? Because the foundations are really shaky. And what were my foundations? My foundations were a low self-esteem, no self-love. I had no boundaries. I had a loud negative inner critic. I had a little understanding of my relationship with myself and I had a lack of confidence. So that makes complete sense to me. Complete sense to me that I had such little love for myself, that I had no boundaries in my life to do with anything, that my loud negative voice was so loud telling me constantly, you're going to fail, you're going to fail, or all sorts of stuff, all sorts of stuff. You're stupid, you're fat, you're ugly, all sorts of stuff that would just bring me back to square one. And that was the problem. And I came to understand that learning to love yourself is what gives our healthy habits the stability they need to stand. And without that strong base, everything else falls apart. And I needed to learn how to love myself again. And I did. I immersed myself in so many courses, so many courses. I went on a huge journey learning how to love myself again. I learned how little care I gave to myself And that was one of the reasons why I always found myself back at square one when I had actually learned how to exercise and eat right. Uh, I learned so much about my relationship with myself, how hard I was on myself. And like, I learned that if you don't know how to love yourself, getting fit and healthy is tough or impossible. And that you might have the best intentions in the world, but you'll never be able to stick with it. Square one is always going to call you back. And just like the house, your efforts are going to crumble if you don't have good solid foundations in place. And those solid foundations are based on developing your self-love. And healthy habits become simple when you have self-love. And I went on to make a plan for myself, a health and fitness plan, which this time included simple daily habits that developed my relationship with myself. Um, And it, it worked. I transformed. I'm free from alcohol. I free from comfort eating. I'm free from unhealthy habits. I'm free from diet culture. I feel confident, calm, I'm more organized and routine. I'm consistent. I have time for myself. I have hobbies now. I love to laugh and have fun in my life. Friendships are very important to me, not to mention all the physical benefits. I feel great in my clothes now. I'm healthy and fit. Um, I'm energetic and motivated and I love life again. I'm not afraid to try new things. I have hobbies. I let go of all the things that didn't serve me. I feel interested in life again I have hobbies and life is terrific and this is the the program that I made and created for myself is the program that I now do in Thrive Academy and I share with all of my clients and this is the program that my clients do Um, and you can go to jessicacook.ie forward slash coaching if you are interested in my program and want to see if there is a spot for you that's uh, jessicacook.ie forward slash coaching and One of the ways I lost 42 pounds, just to bring it back to weight, um, is by doing less, not more. And Tony Robbins has a really great saying that says, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. And when I learned that I had to develop my self-love, Um, And I knew at this point how to exercise and how to eat healthy. I realized when I came back from all those courses that there were some things in my life that weren't going to change, like my environment and my busyness, that I was very busy. I have two young kids. I run a business and I'm very busy. That wasn't going to change. Uh, My environment, meaning um, the the newspapers, the magazines, um, negative people that you are in contact with that you can't help not be, um, were going to stay the same. So I realized I was always going to have these things pulling myself down. And, and that's called priming, by the way. You're, you're always being primed positively or negatively. Um, priming is almost like your, your state. It's, it's the act of taking time to adjust your thoughts and emotions so you can live life in your peak state. So think of yourself being primed negatively. You wake up in the morning, you check your phone, the scrolling puts you into comparison mode. You start to feel a little bit negative. You go downstairs, you have your breakfast, your kids are giving out, you're being primed, you're negative, you're negative. You check the news, there's only there's only really bad stuff. You feel worse and worse and worse. And all of that stuff can have a knock-on effect on your confidence and how you feel. And when you feel bad, you aren't, you're, you're less likely to be motivated to want to be healthy and want to be fit. You can also be 
be primed in a positive way. You might get up in the morning and do your workouts first thing. That's priming yourself in a positive way. You might go, if you're one of my clients, and do a Thrive Time. That's priming yourself in a positive way. You might meditate, you might get out in fresh air, and you might decide to just simply avoid all the negative news, do something really positive, and that's priming yourself. So when I came back from my... Um, my all my courses and I and I realized that I needed to that that I had developed my self-love and it was that that gave me the good foundations and now I needed to focus on implementing the action steps of being fit and healthy I realized I needed a new plan and I realized that plan needed to embody positive priming and that all the the programs that I had tried in the past, they were so wrong for so many different reasons. Um, I mean, all the weight loss industry wants us to do is to get obsessed with one thing. If you notice so many programs like um, Slimming World and Weight Watchers, it's just so food obsessed. It's recipe obsessed, it's food obsessed, and it keeps you trapped in a food hole. Um, it's the same with so many different things in the weight loss industry. They make us focus or believe that our health is our fitness or our nutrition or our fitness and our nutrition and that's it. It's nothing else. And the problem with that, like I was sharing with you in that story is that that never works because we aren't getting to the root cause of any of the reasons of why we're overeating or why we mightn't be working out. And if you never get to the root cause, you're always going to end up hacking at the leaves. And that's one of my favorite quotes by Anthony J. D'Angelo. When solving problems, dig at the roots instead of just hacking at the leaves. And all that weight loss industry stuff that I like to call it, just hacks at the leaves, hacks at the leaves, tries to get you to follow a diet plan. Once you follow this diet plan, your problems will be solved. It doesn't even go near any of your problems whatsoever. It doesn't even 1% get you to think about why you may be overeating. So I knew when I came back, I needed a new plan. And this plan, not only did I need to have a plan for myself that was going to take care of my fitness and nutrition, but also was going to help keep me primed in that positive way and help keep me um, on that lovely path of continuing to develop my relationship with myself so that I continue to learn how to love myself, be kind to myself, be gentle to myself. So my healthy habits became easy. And I developed um, a framework that I now call PAMS, which is a five-step framework um, that, that encompasses all the action steps that you need to be healthy. Um, your physical fitness, your accountability and support, your hydration, your mental health and your self-care. And it's my belief when you do little action steps from each of those you are going to be fit and healthy you're going to know you're going to be doing the right stuff when it comes to your exercise the right stuff when it comes to your nutrition however you're also going to be developing your relationship with yourself so if you need to heal your relationship with food you're going to if you need to heal your relationship with yourself you're going to do that alongside when you're doing your 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 healthy habits in terms of your exercise so just to break that down a little bit for you, I came back and I created a plan and that was step one. And step two, I knew I needed to define action steps for that plan. So my action steps, think of it like the stepping stones that were going to get me towards my goals. And these stepping stones were PAMS, P-A-H, MS, physical fitness, accountability and support, hydration, mental health and self-care. I knew my plan needed to be time efficient and that's one of the biggest things I see with so many programs out there that they expect you to become obsessed not realizing that we want to follow a plan, get fit and healthy and get on with the rest of our lives. So I knew it had to be something that was roughly minimum about 90 minutes per week, that if I was very busy on the weeks I would very, it was very busy, it would take me 90 minutes per week to get everything done. My action steps um, in involving PAMS for the physical fitness, everything had to be maximum results, minimum time. And for us as women over 40, that's doing resistance training, doing strength training, like doing some form of resistance training, which generally speaking means lifting weights, not heavy weights, like three kg, four kg for 30 minutes, three times a week. That's all you need to do 
in terms of your workouts, three 30 minute workouts to get you fit, to get you strong, to get you healthy, to build lean muscle mass, to build your, um, to get a high metabolism, to improve your bone density, not to only mention that it's your mood is going to be terrific, but that, that, that's the time, 30 minutes, three times a week. And when you're stuck and when you're short for time, you can do 20 minutes or 30 minute workouts. And if you're doing that along with a little bit of fresh air walks, getting some walks in, you're going to have a 10 out of 10 when it comes to your fitness and you can leave it at that. Now the A stands for accountability and support. I knew that I needed some feedback loop that when I focused on implementing healthy habits and I don't have any feedback loop, I get distracted. Life does get in the way. You can have all the healthy intentions in the world, but over time, if you haven't built in any feedback loop, any accountability feedback loop into your plan, you're going to get distracted over time. You just are. And the wonderful thing about an accountability feedback loop is every week you're figuring out what's going well, is there anything that you're struggling with, and what action steps do you need to take for the next week to continue on? Um, hydration, really simple. A big ethos of mine is to get in the water into you every day. It's such a quick win. It's so good for your mental health and it can really leave you feeling energized and revitalized and ready for the day. A small little bit of dehydration can leave you feeling lethargic and sluggish. It can actually have an effect on your mood, which blows my mind. Um, Mental health action steps. This is where the self-love part goes on. I developed um, over time a really simple practice called Thrive Time, and it's something that I do with my clients. It's a 10 minute practice and it embodies, um, what we do is it has silence, affirmation, journaling, self-reflection, all in 10 minutes. And I knew when I had figured out this new plan that if I was spending my week like exercising, spending time in journaling, spending time in affirmations, spending time in silence and just having this like really overwhelming amount of things to do on top of my already busy life, I wasn't going to do it. I also knew that um, if I didn't do anything when it came to my my like my priming, my self-care, my um, thrive times that I may backtrack that my negative inner critic might get louder um, and because the way life is and we we run into challenges and setbacks often that I was going to end up backtracking I needed a program that kept my foundations really solid my self-love to myself really really solid so I needed as part of my plan to have a short practice that included all the little practices that I needed to do that would develop my relationship with myself. And that's when I came up with Thrive Time. And I figured out that when I got my three workouts in every week, um, which included strength training, and I got some fresh air and I did those Thrive Times, that I had landed on something very, very magical because I wasn't just hacking away at the leaves, trying to exercise and eat healthy. I was also digging at the roots with those Thrive Times. So we're digging at the roots, we're, we're healing our relationship with ourselves. we're healing our relationship with, our, with food, all while also having time efficient, results focused workouts. And all of this on the most strapped for time week takes 90 minutes a week, 90 minutes a week, 90 to 100 minutes a week. And then adding to that some self-care action steps, which includes your nutrition, making sure that you have lovely nutritional guidelines to follow that aren't restrictive, that aren't dieting. And the wonderful thing about following nutritional guidelines and not making it an obsessive part of your program is that if you realize you find it difficult to stick with your nutritional action steps, you've got to go back. You, 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 that's where the thrive times come in. Because if you realize that you're finding it difficult to um, not overeat, if you're finding it difficult to, to, to not sit down on the couch, if you, if you just all of a sudden feel like, I, I just need something sweet, um, or I need big portions, that's, you're not going to fix that with dieting. You're, you're going to have these nutritional action steps to follow. And if you can't seem to follow them, then you're going to be continuing on with your thrive times and healing your relationship with yourself and developing your self-love. And over time, the nutrition will come. 
But what so many people do, I've noticed, is if they struggle with the nutrition part, they stay focused on the nutrition and the obsession and the food. And that's where that horrible cycle of going back to square one comes in. However, what I'm saying is that if you're struggling with the nutrition, you need to figure out why. And we figure out why in our thrive times and in our self-reflection so that the nutritional guidelines become over time like second nature. And they will if you stick with the thrive time aspect of the program. So this five-step framework, PAMS, physical fitness, accountability and support, hydration, mental health action steps and self-care action steps. I'm not going to go into all the self-care and mental health action steps now, but that was it. I struck gold with that. I dropped 42 pounds for the first time in my life by not focusing on weight loss, by actually throwing away the weighing scales and by actually doing less, not more. I didn't do my usual get obsessed, have my whole week absolutely obsessed about my fitness. What I actually did, and I only realized this a while ago, was that I put a boundary on the amount of time I was going to focus on my health. And I think that's really important. And I want to explain that for a minute. So if you look back, like everything you've ever done in terms of like trying to get fit and healthy that hasn't worked for you in the past, my chances are you're like me and you have also become obsessed. And when you become obsessed with something, you end up, in my opinion, spending a little bit too much time with something. When you spend too much time with something, you get really, really sick of it. So I knew my program needed to be very, very time boundaried and that I could focus on my plan and that once I focused on my plan, I could leave it and get on with my life. And it's really important to be able to leave it and get on with your life because if you can't, if you can't, it's just like everything else. You're going to go back to your old way. There's a wonderful psychological benefit of having it done and dusted and getting on with your day. So you do need to time boundary your program. I hope you found this helpful today. I want you to know one thing before you go. That I did it. And you can do it too. And sometimes it's a matter of letting go of the things that haven't been working for you up to now and deciding to go down a new path. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode today. And if you'd like to learn more about my coaching program, you can go to jessicacook.ie forward slash coaching. Have a wonderful day and thanks for listening.